ratios. I can tell you that there's a lot of uh, indication the cities are looking at ratios. Uh, they use ratios both sometimes in the comprehensive plan and sometimes uh, in their actual uh, zoning legislation. I have not found a case that has ruled one way or the other specifically on, on ratios. Uh, there again, depending on what your ratio was uh, and depending on what basis you could find for that ratio, rather than just pulling it out of the air, uh, you might be able to sustain it if you were very careful not to uh, have it uh, have it be said in any way that you were doing it to uh, discriminate discriminate against low income, but that would probably uh, be somewhat risky. Um, you can prohibit the development of multifamily or attached development within a specific proximity proximity to one another. I mean, that's what been one thing that's been done uh, to regulate it. Uh, They've limited the number of primary residential stu structures allowed for a lot. Uh, there have been prohibitions to constrain the conversion of single-family homes to multifamily, uh, impose uh, restricted parking requirements that makes multifamily uh, uneconomical. Uh, there's been minimum lot size, minimum lot width, and minimum building size. Those have, uh, have suffered uh, quite heavily. Uh, those are some of the cases that have, have overturned uh, uh, Zoning ordinances based on on uh, restrictions and against uh, discrimination. Uh, one other thing that I, I did uh, put here at the bottom, and just so you would know it, and, and uh, also so we would have it in the, in the record that uh, you all discussed it or are aware of it, uh, is a portion of Appendix G, the Ethical Principles and Code of Conduct uh, to our 2003 Comprehensive Plan. And in paragraph four, it, it uh, uh, in a sense discusses uh, multifamily, and it says, "quote expand choice and opportunity for all persons." The city's public servants should strive to make decisions that increase choice and opportunity for all persons. Recognize a special responsibility to plan for the needs of disadvantaged people, and urge that policies, institutions, and decisions which restrict choices and opportunities be changed. Uh, so. Uh, that could sort of be a guideline for you in, in thinking as insofar as you're trying to avoid uh, any any suspicion that, that uh, the motivation is, is either a, a discriminatory against low income or racial minorities. With that, if any of the, uh, I guess anybody on the uh, campus has any questions, I'll be happy to try to address it. As I said, question I, J, and K, you put behind it dangerous, but we already limit the building coverage and things like that. What do you mean by that? That's it, it's dangerous if you if you do something like minimum lot size three acres. If it's something that's not yeah. accepted plan yeah. practice. It, it's not that you can't do those. So we already do that. So. Well, we, we kind of pigeonhole different sections. You still have a wide range, just a matter of what, what zone that you're getting into. Right. Is that correct, Scott? Oh, yes. Any other questions? Any other? How, how are? I'm sorry. How are they? I mean, I don't understand how they can limit the number of multifamily or attached units per year. Uh, how is that? What they did in the Petaluma case was they limited to 500 uh, units per year. If they were part of a house of a uh, development that involved more than four uh, persons per building, in other words, five, a five unit place, right? They limited those to a total of 500. If it was a five unit place, I guess you could have 100 uh, five unit places, or you could have an apartment building with 100 and 400 or something else, but they just limit the number of actual multi family units if they were above uh, a four unit. Place. I haven't seen the exact the specific ordinance. I did bring a, and we'll leave with you a copy of the Petaluma case because it's it's fairly interesting in, in its discussion of, of the uh, exclusionary zoning issues for about two or three pages. Do they live in other uh, residential development in the same way, or is it just uh, five units or larger? I think there was no limitation on duplexes on anything small or something. <coughs> so it was it, it was it it was 
definitely impacted multifamily sure. and yeah. low income. And the court said that, but then went on to make an analysis of whether or not there was a reasonable mm -hmm. uh, reason for doing so. And that's that's where you need to formulate the goal that you have or why you the why of what you're mm -hmm. uh, doing, and then the ordinance itself needs to relate to the goal so that it takes care of the looks like it will. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. McDonald? You mentioned the issue of uh, pre-existing buildings. I had sent you that memo and I didn't bring it with me, but, but yeah, basically, do you have it? Mm -hmm. If you'll give it to me, I'll discuss it. It may have already had it. Basically, it had to do with the question if we change zoning, what happens to first projects that are already built and obviously they're grandfathered in, uh, nothing happens to them. Uh, there are some uh, things in our ordinance that if you try to expand them or you try to make too many different alterations, you make it kicked into the new ordinance. Uh, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't lose your uh, uh, <coughs> actual use itself. Uh, the other thing that, that's a little more harder to, <coughs> to discuss is the idea of what happens if it changes while you're in the process of developing a piece of property. Uh, and this, this deals with the issue of vested rights and when do your, when do your rights go forward uh, best. And it, it's not, not a real clear, uh, <coughs> can't really clearly uh, define. We know in Missouri that if all you've done is bought the property, that's not it. I mean, if you go out and bought property and do multifamily and all of a sudden the rules change and stuff, uh, that's not enough. Uh, you have to have taken some uh, affirmative action uh, to actually be <coughs> developing it. Um, you know, if, if what you've already done, if you've already got permits and stuff to build something, obviously you get to go ahead. If you, if you started construction, you get to go ahead. It's the area in between uh, that's grayer, and it basically involves sometimes a court decision as to whether or not you spend <coughs> uh, uh, to try to get something changed or to develop it. That's usually what it is. And if you spend enough, you may be there, and if you haven't spent enough, you may not be there. Uh, if you apply for permits and you're that far along, you're probably probably. Do you think the permit stage is probably the dividing line between? That, that's the probably the best standards. place to, okay. to, to say it is. What, what if, um, for example, you have a development, um, the first phase is under construction, but you have a remainder of three or four phases. I always want to make sure that the remainder phases fall in under the, 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 the same code. Under, under our ordinances, by that, I'm assuming that you're either with a PUD if you're in the Correct. second phase or you're in the second phase of a plan or whatever, and generally speaking, <coughs> you'd be okay there. But you'd still be okay under the PUD. Okay, I just want to make sure. Question? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. At this point in time, we're going to turn it over to Tom Williams uh, with Ingalls Williams Management. He's going to talk about some ideas he's got for architectural and design standards. Our next meeting, we're going to actually go over Lee Summit and Olathe's design standards, but uh, we thought it would be helpful to have some experts uh, give us their opinion and uh, share with us some of their ideas and I, that what they think we should incorporate into our current codes or new codes. It's all packed. All whole packed. Yeah. yeah. So just grab a whole pack. With regards to the California cases, above here, where you go. Uh, one of the things, because I know the communities that Bob was addressing on those other cases that he's talking about, uh, California has different case law 